Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today is going to be an action-packed kung fu action episode of the uh, Vintage Speed Channel. Uh, I've got a bunch of work to do here on the P48, and um, I just got voluntold that I have a early AM upgrade to do tomorrow morning. So I figure I better get what I can done now um, before I have to get some sleep. So uh, what I'm going to be working on today is the uh, column clamp for our steering column as well as uh, notching out the frame rails for clearance for our steering arms. So I've got all of these things set up uh, and I'm going to get the cameras going and uh, cut my tubing that I need to cut for the drill guides that I'll be tacking to the bottom of the frame rail so that I have a, a guide for the hole saw uh, bit to run through. Uh, so that I get my holes straight and centered and parallel with the IFS cross member. Um, and I've got the steering column clamp uh, set up. I'm going to cut a couple pieces of the same tubing uh, for the bolt that's going to clamp and pinch our column in place. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get to work here on my fancy fab table that I unfolded <laughs> just a second ago. And uh, get to work. Hey guys, so I thought I'd show you the components here that I'm putting together for this steering column clamp. Um, maybe you guys haven't built one before. Uh, so basically what I did is uh, cut a piece of heavy gauge sheet metal, I think 15 gauge sheet metal, a uh, piece of 8th inch wall, 2 inch tubing, regular HREW seam tubing, used a little piece of half inch tubing to make uh, bolt spacers, and what this is going to all come together and look like is like this. So the 2 inch tube, the steering column is going to run through it. And I cut a slot here in the top that will pinch around the steering column tube and hold it into the firewall. So these bolts will be welded onto the top here. I'm going to TIG weld them. Once I TIG that all in place, then I'll cut, I'll remove the bolt, of course. Um, cut a slot down in there to match the slot that's in the 2-inch tubing, and that will allow it to pinch around the steering column. And if it doesn't pinch tight enough, I can open this slot up a little bit more and give it a little more bite on the steering column. And then that will all get bolted into the firewall with our new stainless cap screws from McMaster Car. So that's how that works. I'm going to um, bolt all this into place with some non-stainless hardware uh, so that I can tack it so that the stainless doesn't gall and stick together when I tack weld everything. And I'm going to put it all in place on the firewall, get the steering column and the steering wheel in the right position at the right angle that we're looking for, um, and then tack the sleeve, the pinch sleeve, into the foot plate that go, mounts in the firewall, remove it all, and then fully weld everything with the TIG. Our steering column diameter is 1.75 inch, uh, inch and three quarter. The ID of our two inch 120 wall tubing is um, 1.76. So I've cut this slot, I opened this slot up a little wider so that it, it'll have plenty of bite on the steering column shaft. And if not, we can always open that up a little bit more, but should be plenty. 
Okay guys, here's uh, how the steering column clamp came out. So I thought I'd show you guys uh, the reference marks here that I put on the frame. Um, I chucked up the hole saw and just did a slight cut here so I could check the radius um, that's going to be cut into our frame rail. And as you can see, the three and a half is just too small. It's it's a uh, inch and three quarter as it should be, I guess, from the drill guide to the outer diameter. And the four and, uh, four and three eighths is just going to work much better for us. So that's what I'm going to go with. The overall frame height at this location is four inches. And my cut is a little under two. So I think that's perfect and acceptable. We welded in a whole new cross member here ahead of it or behind it on the frame rail. Um, I only took off a little bit of this front cross member. So uh, I think boxing in this section of frame after I clearance it is completely acceptable and safe and uh, going to give us a better finished product. Okay guys, I got the rack and pinion mounted up in here, everything's finger tight, um, fits good, centered between the frame rails, plenty of, plenty of clearance for our drive shaft, or our D shaft, that's going to go up with three universal joints and connect to the steering column, that actually looks great. So we'll bring it up right here behind the motor mount. Universal joint in this location connected to another universal joint here at the end of the steering column. So it'll come down to about here right on top of the frame and then shoot down there behind the motor mount. No problem at all. The uh, steering column clamp is uh, all tacked together. I'm going to pull that out right now and take it. My uh, dimensions for the power steering unit were a little off, so I've got to do some trimming and fitting of the half moons that I cut into the frame. This one, both sides actually fell centered on the holes that I had previously cut in the boxing plate. So uh, I believe that's three and a half inches from the front of the IFS cross member onto center. Uh, would have been perfect. I was a little off on that, so my holes are a little off. So I've got to trim them back uh, so I get a half inch clearance minimum all the way around. And then I'm going to have to do a little filling on the front side here to uh, fix, the, fix the problem. Well guys, that wraps it up for me for today. Uh, it was a productive day on the P48 project. I uh, got a lot of little things done that needed to get done. Got the rack and pinion mounted. Uh, I need to readdress um, the cutouts around the uh, boots on the rack and pinion that go under the frame. So I've got to, I've still got to trim that a little bit on both sides and and fill a little bit on the other side because I had my holes in the wrong spot. So if you're doing a, a power rack and pinion on a Helix IFS uh, front conversion, you want your notches in the bottom of the frame rail for the steering arms to be at three and a half inches from the front of your cross member, your IFS cross member. I had these uh, holes around four inches and um, that's why I've got to readdress uh, that area. But the rack is in there and I can keep making progress moving forward. So, uh, you know, I, I first started uh, out trying to use the hole saw to, uh, to cut the holes in the frame and this was working just fine. Um, but I had the drill on the slow speed, thinking that it would work better if I ran it through at a slower speed through the frame, and um, one of the teeth caught and bound up, and it actually bent the hole saw, um, at which point 
even though it's still good and sharp, uh, it's not cutting in the same groove all the way around anymore, and it's not effective. So, you know, it took me uh, took me many hours of trying to trying to set up the proper setup to use the whole saw, and in the end, um, I took the angle grinder to it and cut out the two sections of frame roll that I need to cut out in uh, about a half hour between the two sides. So, you know, uh, best laid plans. Um, the other casualty I had was one of my bits here when that uh, when the tooth snagged on the frame rail and bent the uh, hole saw it uh, it twisted this bit pretty good too so live and learn um, I did finish up the uh, the column mount on the firewall um, I, I tigged that up and uh, that came out pretty decent and I've got it mounted in the in the p48 in the truck uh, bolted in, pinch bolts worked fine, pinched the steering column into place and it's holding the column nice and secure as it should. Um, so that worked out great. I tried to get some video of that and my batteries went dead so while the while the cameras were charging I just mounted it up. Um, so I'll get some video of that uh, just to show the final finished installed product. It looks pretty good in there. So tomorrow I'll be addressing uh, trimming out the holes around the uh, rack and pinion boots, getting those trimmed back a little bit further so that the boot is centered in the half moon cut out in the frame and closing in the front section of frame. Uh, I'm going to take that schedule 40 pipe that I've got, um, cut a couple pieces to fit in there and then bend those a little tighter uh, to fit nice and tight around the boot uh, with about a half inch clearance all the way around is my, my goal for that. So once I get those cutouts finished, trimmed out, welded in, closed up, good to go, then I'm going to focus on the rear supports for the lower controller mounts so I can put the front suspension back together again for good. Um, so I'm going to try and get that all done tomorrow and get it back on its front suspension. Um, then I can measure for the D-shaft and the universal joints for the steering shaft, uh, order up the bearings for the steering column, and uh, get the column done, 100% get the steering done. So once I complete the steering here this weekend and get that 100% other than the parts that I have to order that will come in, then I'm going to start focusing on the brakes, the fabrication for the brake pedals. Uh, what we're using is this pedal mount, which is out of a, uh, I believe it's out of a early 80's square bodied Chevy uh, Silverado pickup truck. Um, they used these for many different years during that time period and uh, basically your it mounts under the dash uh, steering column goes right through the center here and master cylinder and booster mount to this end through the firewall so I've got to uh, modify this I've probably got to shorten it a little bit I've got to maybe narrow the column area a little bit I'm not sure yet um, get this mounted up into the dash so it supports the steering column location of the under dash and gives us a place to mount our master cylinder. So next week hopefully I'll be on to brakes, get, uh, get the pedal assembly in place, uh, get the clutch and pedal hanging, um, get the master cylinder mounted up so I can start making and routing our hard brake lines uh, and getting ready to get our flexible lines made up for all four corners. And once we have a steering and a braking system, um, then the P48 is going to be ready to move. Uh, once the flywheels machine, the transmission will go back in for good. Uh, we'll put a new throwout bearing in there, a new clutch slave, and clutch master I've got to pick up. I don't have a master cylinder yet for the clutch. Um, so those are still items that need to be addressed. Um, I'm hoping here in the next couple weeks that the P48 will be driving under its own power here. Um, very soon. So thanks for watching guys. If you like the content, uh, please click like and subscribe.